Hey everyone, in this video I'll share the latest update on semiconductor stocks that I have in my portfolio, especially after many have reported earnings in the last two weeks. I'll also discuss the future outlook about chip shortage and if we need to be concerned about the potential oversupply by 2023. Here's my semiconductor portfolio. I'll only discuss my top five holdings in this video, which are NVIDIA, AMD, Skywork Solution, ASML, and Taiwan Semiconductor. I have covered LAM Research and Texas Instrument in my previous video if you're interested. Anyway, all of the companies have released their Q2 earnings except for NVIDIA. As you can see from the table, all of them presented good earning results. ASML and AMD in particular provide significant upside guidance for the following quarter and the stock price appreciation after the report release reflects that. So Skywork Solution was down 8% at some point after they released earnings. In my opinion, the market overreacted. In case you're not familiar with Skywork Solution, it's a company that develops, design, and manufacture 5G related components and front-end modules for devices like smartphone, uh, VR glasses, cars, and so on that enable those devices to communicate and use 5G networks. So a large portion of Skywork solution uh, incomes come from Apple, which partly has caused this stock to have lower valuation because of the dependency. According to System Plus, Skyworks accounted for 2% uh, more or less of the iPhone cost. So in 2020, 56% of the overall revenue for Skyworks solution came from Apple. However, they are in a much better position today with more relevance to automotive industry, especially after they have completed the acquisition of the infrastructure and uh, automotive business unit from Silicon Labs. The company projects that in the future, 73% of all cars will be shipped with cellular connectivity by 2024. In addition, for each autonomous vehicle, $50 cost will be spent on radio frequency chip. So this will gradually diversify Skywork Solution core business away from smartphone makers like Apple. So in my opinion, Skywork Solution is a solid 5G play and a good investment for long-term investors. In fact, I've used the dip right after earning to add into my position. The other company that didn't have a positive reaction right after their release earning is Taiwan Semiconductor. There's basically a pressure on the profit margin because of their plan to expand their foundry capacity by spending 100 billion in three years. So the roadmap caused Morgan Stanley to downgrade the stock as their profit margin will fall below 50%. The competition could also increase from Intel, especially after last week's announcement that they plan to produce the world's most advanced semiconductor by 2024, and they hope to take the leadership position from Taiwan Semiconductor in 2025. While it remains to be seen if Intel could reach parity uh, with technology leadership from Taiwan Semiconductor, the other big question for me is if they will be able to match the cost efficiencies of Taiwan Semiconductor processes. While Intel just unveiled their plan, Taiwan Semiconductor continues to make progress with their uh, roadmap. Days after Intel announcement, Taiwan Semiconductor moved ahead with their 2 nanometer facility that expected to be in construction phase next year. So the other good news is Taiwan Semiconductor also signs multiple automotive contracts throughout 2022 uh, as it ramps up the production capacity. So many speculate that we may have already seen the peak of the semiconductor chip shortage and with the capacity expansion across the industry, eventually those facilities are ready to be used and we could see oversupply by 2023. Many industry players actually said that the capacity would still be very tight throughout 2022 and they're also more strategic this time around and we won't have the steep drop of demand as in the past. Moreover, we are in a super cycle with semiconductor chips, demand kept growing across multiple industries. We start seeing chip shortage affect the smartphones and gaming console based on Apple and Microsoft latest earnings. Based on the information available and the outlook provided by the companies who have reported earnings so far, it's too early to call but I doubt that we would have an oversupply by 2023. So one thing to watch out though, once the new manufacturing facilities are online, how would it impact the equipment suppliers such as ASML as they would be in less demand? 
So remember that semiconductor equipment supplier don't just make uh, income from equipment sales by, but also from the service contract on those equipments. So the more equipment being sold and installed, the more future income would come from servicing those tools. So among semiconductor equipment suppliers that I have in my portfolio, ASML is one that I'm most bullish on due to their monopoly in UV technology that is required to manufacture advanced chips. They are valued much higher compared to the other equipment manufacturer, but I think it is justified given that they have monopoly on this technology. Their guidance for the next quarter indicates that they have a large backlog of EUV demand which continue to represent larger shares of their revenue. I've added my position a few weeks before earnings, so with post-earning share price appreciation, I would wait for a pullback before considering adding more. The other companies that had a positive reaction after earning release was AMD. There are many things to like from this company. Their gross margin continuously improved in the last four quarters and basically up 4% year over year. And the full year guidance have been revised up twice now with the expectation that they now will grow revenue 60% for the full year. AMD also continues to take market share from Intel on data center and it has become more than 20% of their revenue. If AMD continues growing at this pace, the valuation is actually not expensive at all, especially if you compare it with a company like Nvidia. Another reason to like AMD is the potential from their ceiling acquisition, which is expected to close by the end of this year, but it is still pending for approval from China. If the acquisition can, comes through, AMD would be able to expand the number of chips that they can offer. Sinning is the leading designer of field programmable array that allow multipurpose and customizable chips. So just a reminder, based on the acquisition deal announced last year, Sinning shareholder will get 1.7234 shares of AMD. So ceiling share price at the time of the recording is 149.84 and AMD share price was 106.19. That implies 18% discount as of 30th of July closing price. So in theory, you could buy ceiling stock as a way to get AMD stock at a discount as long as you are fine with the potential risk that it may not get approval from China. So the last company, NVIDIA, is the largest semiconductor holding in my portfolio. The company is scheduled to report earning on August 18. And the share price has been under pressure as China's antitrust regulatory review of their plan to acquire ARM is delayed. A correction is always a good thing over the long term, especially after the big surge that we have just seen from mid-May to before the stock split. And NVIDIA, in my opinion, is a good long-term play because it is the leader uh, in GPU technology, which is highly in demand for gaming, data centers, supercomputers, artificial intelligence, and even crypto mining. The revenue increased 84% in the first quarter, so the expectation is high for the second quarter. It will be interesting to see the revenue from crypto mining, which was growing rapidly in Q1, although it's still a very small portion of NVIDIA revenue. One other area that still contributes a tiny fraction of NVIDIA revenue but has a big potential is NVIDIA Drive. The Level 2 Plus Autonomous Vehicle system will likely hit the road by 2022 and it's planned to be used by car manufacturers like Hyundai, Neo, Volvo and later on by Mercedes-Benz in 2024. Anyway, if you think this video is helpful, consider to like the video and subscribe to the channel to help others find this video easier. And as usual, this is not a financial advice. Always make sure to do your own research before making any investment decision and see you next time.